Welcome to AllWorks and our training series on how to use your new AllWorks phone system. To make this training as easy as possible, we have created a collection of small feature-specific sections. We cover all of the new features, so feel free to watch the videos all at once or one section at a time and at your own pace. Your AllWorks phone has many capabilities, and over time you will see that in many cases there are multiple ways to initiate or access the same feature. To help you with the initial training session, however, we will show you how to access the most popular features the way most others access them. We have tried to make this guide as comprehensive as possible without overcomplicating the everyday use of your new phone. We also add new features all the time, so bookmark this page in your favorite browser and come back frequently. Let's get started with a brief overview of the phone. AllWorks manufactures three different model phones. Many of the phone's features are the same, and the primary difference between the models is the number of programmable buttons and or optional devices you can add to the phone. The easiest model to use is the 9204. This model has only four programmable buttons. Next comes the 9212 with 12 programmable buttons, and our largest model is the 9224. One of the available options on the 9224 is the Telephone Expander. Each expander adds 24 more buttons, and with the maximum of three added expanders, you can have a phone with 96 programmable buttons. Your phone label above the LCD will say either AllWorks or Paytech. If your phone looks similar to these phones and its label says AllWorks, it is one of our earlier designs, and everything you learn here still applies. If it does not say All Works or Paytech, then most of the information in the rest of this guide won't apply. The focal point of every All Works phone is the LCD display. The LCD screen gives you lots of information during each step of the call. In addition to the current date and time on the top row, when the phone is ringing, the display shows the caller's name and number. This can be an internal or external call. When you dial out to call someone, the display confirms you have dialed each digit correctly. On the bottom of the display are four information fields, and below the LCD are four matching buttons. Each one is context sensitive, meaning that their functions change based on the phone's status. They have unique fields when the phone is idle, or when you are on an inbound call, or on an outbound call. When the phone is idle, the keys give you configuration, Calls, Redial, and Presence. Calls list all the inbound and outbound calls. Redial redials the last call, and Presence changes your individual presence settings and call routings. We'll learn more about that later. When off hook, the display changes so you can select from a list of speed dials, the same list of calls, Redial, or you can access the company phone book. When your phone is ringing, the keys change, so you can select silent or ignore if you do not want to take the call. Now that you understand how the display is used, let's focus on the buttons and how they are used to answer and transfer calls. Based on the particular phone you have, you will have anywhere from 4 to 96 buttons that can be individually programmed for your particular needs. By default, your phone has two personal call appearances. We recommend that you keep these two buttons as a default setting. These buttons are used as places for the call to appear whenever you place or receive a call. Lift your handset to make an outgoing call, and you will see the light on the bottom call appearance turn green. You can have more than two call appearances if you need to answer and process a lot of calls. Just ask your administrator. But for most people, two call appearances are enough. Most of the time, each personal call appearance is yours, and yours alone. Sometimes they can be shared among other users, for call coverage of your boss or your assistant. Even if the call appearance is shared, when you are on a call, that call is private. No one can accidentally pick up your call because that call appearance does not appear on their phone. No one can pick up a call you placed on hold unless that call appearance is a special shared call appearance. Your phone may be optionally programmed with direct line appearances. These are used when you want every outside telephone line to directly appear on your phone. Initially, this may look like an easier way to process calls, and for smaller systems with very few calls, it may be. However, when you put a call on hold, you give up control, and anyone can accidentally pick it up. Another user can take it off hold by selecting the line appearance, and if they do, you cannot retrieve it until they place it back on hold. 
Now let's examine how the remaining buttons can be used. Any unused button can be programmed for direct line appearances, another extension, speed dials, or features that you need to use regularly. When you program a button as another extension, that button also becomes a busy lamp field, which lets you see when the other user is on the phone. When that person is busy, the color of the button next to their name is red, and if they are in Do Not Disturb, the button is solid amber. These same buttons serve another purpose, and that is to call the user with a single push of the button. When you do, their phone will ring, unless, of course, their phone is in Do Not Disturb. You can program a busy lamp field on any available unused button. You need to ask the administrator to program any of your unused buttons for this, so start your list. What do all the colors of the different lines mean? When you access a call appearance, it turns green. If your phone is programmed with multiple line appearances, a line in use by another user appears red on your phone. This makes it easier to know which call you are on, which line or phone someone else is on, or in the case of another extension, whether or not they are on the phone. Installing the paper designation strip on your phone is very easy. Simply lift the tab at the bottom to remove the plastic overlay and lift the strip of paper. Ask your office manager or the administrator for the Microsoft Word template and then you can reprint or change your own designation strip anytime you need. The most useful feature buttons are right above the keypad. These represent the most frequently used features and are used exactly the same way regardless of which model phone you are using. As soon as someone leaves you a voicemail, your messages key lights red. To listen to your messages, press the button, enter your voicemail password, or follow the prompts on the display. If you want to call someone but don't have a button programmed for their extension, simply press intercom and then dial their three or four digit number. A list of everyone's extensions should already be distributed, but if not, you can search the phone book on the phone. Every AllWorks phone has the capability to easily create a three-party conference call. If you have the newest four-button phone, you can even make a four-party conference call. View the Call Basics section to learn how. If you have answered a call and want to transfer that call to someone else, Select the Transfer button and dial the extension where you want to transfer the call. If you have a button programmed for that individual, you can also select Transfer and then select the button next to their name. The Release button is a very easy way to end a call without having to hang up the handset or push down the hook switch. If you are using a headset without an on-off switch on the headset, you will find this to be the easiest way to end the call. Park is a feature used to place calls on a system-wide hold, so anyone else can pick up the call from any other phone. The Info button simply gives you at a glance the current function of each button. This is also an aid that you can use to assist you in labeling your phone. Let's learn how to use your new speakerphone together. Every AllWorks phone is a high-fidelity speakerphone, so to place a call using the speakerphone, press the speaker button and start dialing. To answer a call when your phone is ringing, press speaker and say hello. If you have answered or placed a call using the handset but now wish to change to the speakerphone, press speaker and then hang up the handset. This now places the call on the speakerphone. To transition from a speakerphone call to a handset call for privacy, simply lift the handset again. When on a speakerphone call, you can also end the call by simply pressing speaker. And remember, speakerphones are used when there is no expectation of privacy, so use them at your own discretion. Privacy also works both ways, so avoid noisy areas where background conversations can be heard by the person on the other end of the speakerphone call. The mute DND button serves two purposes. When the phone is idle and you select this button, it puts the phone into Do Not Disturb, meaning that anyone calling you will not cause your phone to ring. This is very useful if you are in a meeting and you do not want the phone to interrupt you. If you are on the handset, headset, or speakerphone and select this button, you will mute the call so that you can have a private conversation without the other party on the call being able to hear you. The hold button will place the call on hold, but only on your phone. This is good when you know that only you will ever retrieve the call. If you want to retrieve the call from another phone or want someone else to be able to pick up the call, 
you are better off to use the Park button instead. The Volume button toggles a number of settings. When the phone is idle, it will adjust the ringer volume for incoming calls. If you are on the handset, headset, or speakerphone, it adjusts each volume independently. As a general rule, and for optimal voice quality, keep the volume setting around zero. Turning up the volume too high will degrade the audio quality, the same way turning up a radio too loud also impacts its speaker quality. If you ever need to unplug and move your phone, here's how. If you turn the phone on its back and take a quick glance, you will notice the four square cable connectors and one round connector for a power transformer. There is a dedicated jack for both the handset and headset marked with different icons. Please double check and make sure the handset jack is plugged into the handset. And if equipped, the headset is connected to the headset jack. Connecting them incorrectly will result in very poor audio and may lead you to mistakenly believe the phone is defective. The two plugs to the right connect the phone between your PC and the network jack in the wall. In some installations, you might find that there are separate cable connections, one for the PC and a separate one exclusively for the phone. Because the AllWorks phone connects directly to the network, you can easily move the phone simply by unplugging and reconnecting the phone into another active jack. But if you encounter problems, please check with your administrator to make sure the phone is plugged in correctly. There is a removable base stand on your phone. If your phone is not wall-mounted, you can easily adjust the base to any of three different height positions. Depending on your particular network switch configuration, the phone power may be provided directly and you may not need the optional power transformer. An easy test is to plug in the cable for the LAN network connection and if the phone starts its boot-up sequence, you do not need the transformer. When you power up your new phone, it will go through a setup procedure before being able to be used. If it does not follow this procedure or result in your name in the display, please contact your system administrator for help. This concludes the telephone overview portion of our training. When you are ready, move on to any of the other sections that you need help with.